Welcome to Focus Sport, this is the Olympics News Wrap. Kia ora, I'm Shuri Kinnear and a successful day four for New Zealand at the Tokyo Olympics all topped off with our very first medal, a bronze from Hayden Wild in the triathlon event. So let's take a look back at all the news from day four. Fagatani's Wild claimed the bronze, becoming just the third ever Kiwi to medal in the event to date. It was an emotional finish for the 23-year-old who finished it all off with a fist pump. Going over the finish line with a massive fist pump, that was uh, yeah to the, all the pretty much all the Kiwis uh, in the crowd and and the, on on the TV screens. Um, yeah, I was actually trying to find uh, a couple of the, the friendly faces uh, that I. Uh, that came down with me uh, at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, saw them in the corner, so uh, I was gave them a cheeky fist pump and a wink, and uh, yeah, it was pretty awesome to also uh, yeah see Hamish Hamish Carter there, um, you know, ex uh, Olympic champion, and um, yeah, just uh, have that moment with him, which was uh, yeah, it was it was pretty inspiring to be honest. He'll be back racing in the teams relay later this week. Mountain biker Anton Cooper came so close to a medal in the cross country event but in the end, finishing fifth. Teenage swimming sensation Erica Fairweather had her crack at the podium in the 400 metre freestyle final after an exceptional performance in the heat. But it was a race too far for the 17 year old who finished eighth. And later in the day, she just made the 200 metre freestyle semis, qualifying 14 out of 16. The All Black Sevens got off to a great start, thrashing South Korea 50-5 and then Argentina 35-14 in their first two games to top their pool. Our surfers Ella Williams and Billy Stearman were knocked out of the competition in the one-on-one -on -one elimination heats in the round of 16. The pair finished in a joint ninth place in their competitions. The Blacksticks women remain unbeaten in their quest for gold after a 2-1 victory over Japan, keeping them on track for the quarterfinals. It was a far less convincing performance than their stunning 3-0 win over world number two Argentina, but the win places them as one of two unbeaten teams in the group, the other being Australia. Michael Venus and Marcus Daniel advanced to the quarterfinals in the tennis, but without as much as hitting a ball after one of their Dutch opponents tested positive for COVID-19. And Sam Meech had a second unconvincing day in the laser, finishing eighth in race three to move to 17th overall. In international news, how about this for a celebration? The Australian swimming coach absolutely lost it after Aussie Ariane Titmus won the 400 metre freestyle. 46 year old, yes 46, an eight time Olympian, Oksana Koshovitina was given a standing ovation by her fellow competitors and judges as she bowed out of her last game's appearance. She has competed in every Olympics since 1992. And going from one age to the other, we've got 13-year-old Momaji Nishia, who won the first ever Olympic gold medal in the women's street skateboarding. She missed out on making history as the youngest gold medal winner by just 62 days. Hedalyn Diaz became the first Olympic gold medalist from the Philippines, winning the weightlifting women's 55 kg category. And a lesson to never celebrate too early. Dutch powerhouse Anna Meg van Fluten crossed the finish line in the women's road race thinking she'd won gold. And fair enough, she couldn't see anyone in front of her. But that's because amateur Anna Kuschenhofer had already finished after sneaking ahead earlier in the race. As we move our attention to the medals table, China stays in the lead. Three days running now with 18 medals. The US, they're not too far behind, 14, just in front of host country Japan. And New Zealand are ranked 46 there with our bronze medal. Well, plenty of action to follow today as we take a look at day five. Our female triathletes get underway first, just before the All Blacks face Australia in their final Pool A clash. Boxer David Naika gets in the ring and the sailing ramps up as Peter Burling and Blair Chuk hit the water. And one to watch there, Luca Jones gets a shot at gold in the canoe slalom should she make it through to the final. Well, as mentioned there, David Naika finally gets into the ring today as he eyes Olympic gold. And he joins me now from Tokyo. David, thank you so much for your time. 
Now you've dabbled in the pro ranks a little bit before, but have you thought much about how this could be your last competition as an amateur before you head down that professional route? Absolutely, yeah. This is the, the finish line for my apprenticeship. Um, uh, I, you know, I've, uh, I've, I've worked really, really hard um, just to make it to an Olympics. Um, and now I've, I've got the opportunity to um, test my medal. And um, yeah, I, re I really want to make sure that I uh, use this opportunity as well as I can and that uh, spring, springboards me uh, into the professional scene. Um, and then, yeah, I have no idea where the, where the future lies. And is that what you think is giving you maybe that extra drive to push on and get on the podium? Yeah, I've, yeah, I've, I've got a lot of, um, like a, a, a bit of animosity leading into this tournament. I've, um, you know, I, I know, I know I've, I've, I've earned it. I've, I've, um, I deserve it. And looking back on, on the, uh, my failure at Rio, uh, to, to qualify for the Rio Olympics, I I concede that maybe I wasn't I wasn't as ready as I thought I was at the time. But um, uh, here today, I know that I've uh, I've done what it takes to be um, to prove that I'm one of the best best on the planet. So um, yeah, this is my opportunity to prove to myself that I've um, that I've done the work. That's great. Thank you so much for joining me, David. It was great to hear from you, and all the best for today. Now, as has been said many times, this year's games are like none other. No international fans were allowed to attend and there's very limited access even for locals. As we saw yesterday, only a few were allowed on the cross country mountain biking event. But we love to get amongst the Olympics and to back our Kiwis. So a fan zone has been set up at the Cloud in Auckland. So we sent our reporter Lachlan War to check it out. <laughs> Right, we're down here at NZHQ at the Cloud on Auckland's waterfront, a hub for New Zealand sports fans to take in all of the Tokyo Olympics action. You won't be short on entertainment right here. Let's go take a look. If you're a young Olympic sports fan, odds are you'll be entertained here at NZHQ. Plenty on offer. And if you're a bit older and want something a little more relaxing, you can come down here. Oh look, there's so many activations here. For the kids especially, we've got about four or five school trips coming through today. They can pretend to be an athlete, they can run around and play all the um, Olympic games. Have a look at this amazing skateboard here. I've just had about six kids measure out 12 metres of this huge skateboard and there's lots of quizzes that the kids can do and people can do and find out a lot more about the Olympians and the Olympics. People are amazed at just how many Olympians have been through and how few of them have actually won you know, gold, silver and bronze. They're really blown away by that but to see the faces and interact with a lot of the um, digital signs and stuff and to be able to sort of almost touch the athletes, it's pretty cool. People are staying right through till one or two o'clock in the morning, it's crazy, yeah. So it really depends on just how busy the day is and when our New Zealand Olympians feature, but any time of the day is a good day. Looks like lots of fun down there. Make sure you do get down there if you're in Auckland and watch some of the action. Now, as mentioned earlier, more of our sailors get underway today. Blair Chuk and Peter Burling among them in the 49er. The pair share an incredible career with multiple world championship and two America's Cup titles to their names. But as New Zealand Herald sports reporter Chris Reeve discovered, another Olympics gold would mean just that little bit more. You know, the Olympic Games always has a, a pretty special spot in the sailing world. And, you know, for you know, us personally, uh, you know, it's the biggest sporting event in the world. So, you know, to be able to go there and you know, represent our, our nation. This has also been something we've put an incredible amount of hard work into over the last you know, three years. You know, there's definitely been times where you've been you know, working pretty hard, juggling a, f a few commitments, but you know, we got ourselves into a point where we we're in really good shape um, you know, and running in nicely to where the target was set. Yeah, we don't look too far into the future. We've got um, some pretty big goals in front of us and and uh, no, more so than one sort of staring straight at us in, in Tokyo in a, a couple of uh, months. So we sort of just concentrate on doing the, the best job we can there and, um, and, and trying to win a, another gold medal for our country. And 
uh, we'll reassess on um, sort of the Olympic stuff after that. But yeah, we just push out for now and concentrate on what's ahead of us. You can watch the full video and read the feature as part of our 12 to watch series on the New Zealand Herald website with premium access. And you can stay up to date with when our sailors and other New Zealanders are competing and how they're doing with our real-time Kiwi Games Tracker. And find out more about our athletes and teams with our interactive schedule. Simply click on a name to look at their bios, past games performances, upcoming events and medal chances. Plus, you can catch live commentary of key events on News Talk ZB, the official radio broadcast partner of the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. We'll also have expert analysis on the DRS and Sports Talk, as well as our daily Olympic podcast, Tokyo in 20. So plenty of platforms to choose from to get your Olympics fixed today. So enjoy all of the action, and as we saw yesterday, you never really know when something amazing is going to happen. But if you do happen to miss any of it, I'll be back tomorrow to wrap all of the news. I'm Sheree Kinnear for Focus Sports.